Indeterminate torsional elements are basically similar to the indeterminate axially loaded elements. So I will start with indeterminate axially loaded elements. For axially loaded elements like this, do you remember what we did for solving these kind of problems? We had four steps. The main part, we, are, we were not able to determine internal forces just by using equilibrium. So we had to take X-ray equation from compatibility of deformation. All right? Let's review what we did before for indeterminate axially loaded elements. In the first step, we use equilibrium equation to determine what is the relation between internal forces, like F1 and F2 in this figure. And we basically have three equations, sum of the forces in X direction, forces in Y direction, and sum of the moments. And if these are not sufficient to get the internal forces, we call that indeterminate problem. The second step is determining the deformations as a function of force. Deformation in axially loaded element is described by delta, and it is FL over EA. The third step, which is the main part of these kind of problems, is writing a relation between deformations. So, compatibility equation describes a relation between deformations which is based on the geometry of the problem. In this figure, what is the relation between delta 1 and delta 2 in these two shafts? What is the total change in the length of the system? It's zero. So I can say that in this case, delta 1 and delta 2 is equal to zero. And that was category number one. If you remember, we generally have three categories. Category number one is delta 1 plus delta 2 is zero. And we had two more categories, like delta 1 is equal to delta 2 or similar triangles category. In the, in the third step, we get one extra equation. In the fourth step, we combine the equations that we get in the first and in the third step and solve it for force. So equilibrium and compatibility are combined together and we solve it for force. Once we get the force, we are done with the difficult part of the problem. All right? Now we want to use this technique to solve problems related to indeterminate torsional elements. Okay, look at this figure, the bottom figure. The bottom figure consists of two shafts, but instead of subjecting to axial force, it is subjected to a torque. Here, definitely, there is not any elongation or change in the length. So what would be the compatibility of deformation in this case? First. What kind of deformation happens here? It's twist. Twist occurs in torsional elements. How much is the total twist of the shafts in the system? That will be zero. Starting from left end, moving all the way to the right, the total twist in the system is zero. So I can say that the compatibility equation for this problem is phi1 plus phi2 is equal to zero. OK? All right, let me show you those four steps that we need to take for solving indeterminate torsional elements. Correct the title. It's indeterminate torsional elements, which is very similar to indeterminate axially loaded elements, by the way. The first step is using free body diagram to determine the internal torque. The equilibrium equation that should be used here is sum of the torque should be zero. If we have more than one torque, one unknown torque, we can't solve that because we have just one equation. In the second step, we write a relation between twist and torque. So twist is TL over GJ. Generally, everything in this equation is known but torque. So phi is torque times length divided by GJ. And we can simplify that into a form of torque divided by a number or torque multiplied by a number. OK? In the third step, we establish a relation between the deformations or twists in different shafts. It depends on the geometry of the problem. Generally, we have two categories. In axially loaded elements, we had three. Here, we had two categories. So torsional elements are basically easier compared to the axially loaded elements. So in this figure, when we move from A to B, phi1 and phi2 are equal to zero. Not each of them, but some of them are equal to zero. What would be the compatibility equation for this figure? Here, 
we have three elements, so phi 1 plus phi 2 plus phi 3 is equal to 0. Okay? So the same is true for the bottom figure. Here we have two elements, but because the torque in these two elements are, are different, I will say phi 1 plus phi 2 plus phi 3 is equal to 0. So this is what we call the category number 1. The second category is like this. In this category, one element is within the other element, like this figure. The tube on the outside is surrounding the shaft inside, and they are fully connected together. So what is the relation between these two, the, the twists of these two? They are fully attached together. So the twist of outer element is equal to the twist of inner element. So phi 1 is equal to phi 2. Same is true for this one, or this one. For this one, I'm talking about the middle part, from B to C. From B to C, the twist will be the same. Okay? So this is the second category, and the last step is solving for torque. So we get one equation from a step number one, we get another equation from a step number three, we combine them together and solve it for torque. So these four steps are similar to what we had before. Okay, let me solve a problem, then I will ask you to solve a problem, then we discuss in detail some other problems.